Mason is fine. Mason, Mason needs a new body. I'm glad you're in now. Mason's fault when he finishes it. Stop all the comments. They keep No. Everyone stop. It's done. I'm trying. Do it as best I can. I can't. I just. Mason, I'm sorry. I just. Pulling it in. Mason! What? what are you doing? Just running to home, it's two as you sleep. It's two in the morning. Okay. Can you go to bed, please? Yeah, when I'm done. All right guys, give me two minutes, real quick. Two minutes before you skip ahead to the end of the video, before you just go on to when Mason gets his dirt bike, just give me two minutes to explain a little bit of our history and Mason's journey. I was thinking about this a little bit ago. I actually had to sit down and think to myself, how many bikes has Mason had? in the past few years. We've gone through a lot of bikes for Mason. It's been kind of a journey. It's been an interesting journey for him, I think. And the reason for that is because as he progresses both in skill and height, I am also progressing in um, our financial situation. YouTube's getting better for us. We're able to provide uh, better equipment, better bikes. So it's been kind of interesting. The first bike that we got was in 2017, springtime. About three years ago, Mason was five at the time and we got a TTR 50. And that bike was initially for the family. It was just a family bike. It was really fun. The kids were just learning. We would go put around friends' backyards and we just tried to find fields and I tried building a jump and stuff and it was a fun family bike so I'm not gonna count that one as Mason's first bike at that point I felt like the kids needed something a little bit faster a little bit more aggressive so I found these two KTM 50s they were older I sold the TTR and then we got the KTM's and that was a mistake I want to recommend getting older KTM's first of all and also if you don't know how to work on bikes very well it probably wouldn't be a good pick we got those bikes and Mason never really rode it because it it was having problems. So I'm not gonna count that one either. So that one doesn't count. And then we got the Honda 50. That one was kind of a family bike also, but at the same time we got a SSR 70. And I'm gonna count that as Mason's very first bike. You are all muddy. Yeah, how many times did you fall do you think? Probably like four. That bike really became his own. He liked it, it fit him really good, it was fast, he was jumping it, he was taking it to races, we put his graphics on there, we put his race number on there. Good thing I didn't break my neck. Yeah, that's probably a good thing, huh? Wanted to get paralyzed? Yeah, probably a good thing you didn't get paralyzed, huh? To me, that was Mason's very first bike. That was a good time also. That was a lot of fun, a lot of cool memories. I remember that was the first time that we went to PIR and I put a GoPro on him. And when, when the kids are racing, you can't see everything. You're usually stuck on one point of the track. It's hard to follow them around the whole time. And it was just so fun for me to go back and look at the footage of him riding the SSR around the track and seeing things like seeing him almost run over someone. Or this one time he came off the track and he told me he had to turn around and go backwards on the track. And I was confused and he couldn't explain it to me. And I was like, why did you turn around and go backwards on the track? And he said he had to. And then it wasn't until I went back and looked at the footage and then I saw him, somebody like cut him off as he was going up this hill and then he lost momentum and then he had to turn around and go backwards. So it was just cool. It was fun memories that I'm glad that we experienced, glad that we captured. And I look back on that bike as just fond memories. But Ever since the time that we were at Riverdale and he tried to jump the big tabletop and he crashed, I realized that, okay, this bike has its limitations. The suspension isn't as good as what he needs. And I wanted something a little bit quicker. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any experience with, with 50s. I didn't know what to do. All the fast kids ride Cobras. Lots of people say they're the best. So we went and we bought him a Cobra 50. That bike was a mistake. No gear, just one gear, just go. You don't have to shift up, just give it more gas. I don't 
think he was ready for it. I don't think it was the best bike for him at the time. We probably would've been better off going back to a KTM, but like I said, I had a bad taste in my mouth because we just had KTMs. Would've been better to go to a KTM or a Husky, but like I said, I didn't know. So we got this Cobra and it had zero bottom end power. You really had to pin it and hold the thing open and then it would shoot. It had strong mid end power, but he wasn't used to that. He was used to the four strokes that were really responsive. And this bike was just kind of a frustration for him. It would hesitate, he would give it gas, it wouldn't go anywhere, or as he would say in his terminology, it lagged. I've never worked on these bikes, so I didn't know, so I took it to the Cobra dealer, the local guy, and had him go through it. Before we get rid of this bike, just make sure, is everything running properly? Is everything running the way it should? I spent way more money to give it one more shot, put a new top end in it, put a new clutch in it, even had his son ride it, who was an experienced 50 rider, and he said, yeah, it's running good. So at that point, I felt defeated. I felt like I failed as a moto dad because I didn't have, I knew, I knew we could get him up to speed eventually. I knew that if we had more time and money that he could get training and he could just keep going to the track. But at that point, we were just doing it when we could here and there. So I didn't feel like I had the resources to help him make that bike work. So in order to make sure that he was having fun when we did go ride, I decided to sell it. We lost money on it, but whatever. And we went back to a four stroke. We got a TTR 90. So that was his third dirt bike. And that bike, again, nice. was a great bike. No. It was even faster than the 70. It was responsive. It had electric start. And it really didn't take long for him to start building confidence again. Oh, I think he's got it. Nice. He was riding good again. He was being more aggressive. He felt really at home on that bike. And as soon as I felt like he mastered it and he was riding as good as he was gonna ride again, then I was like, okay, we need to put him on a two stroke again because we can't race the 90 in the 50 class. There's no class for the 90. He literally just did a moto with a 65 class, had about a 10 minute rest. Right about that time, I found a Polini 50 online. And I was a little hesitant, but it was 500 bucks. And I was like, let's go for it. Let's just, let's just roll the dice. Let's see what happens. We picked it up. We took it to PIR for the first time. He hadn't even ever ridden it. And he got on the thing and it was so responsive. Like he's used to giving it gas, like a half throttle to get going on the TTR. So he does that on the Polini. And then he starts wheeling all over the place. I was worried about it but as soon as as soon as he got comfortable with it and he was like okay this is what the bike's gonna do as soon as he got to that point that bike was great for him it may be old but it's quick the suspension was okay but mostly the power he felt really comfortable and confident in the power and getting it to hit and getting it to go when he wanted to And that bike was a good decision. I feel like that bike really helped him grow. He got his very first hole shots on that bike. He got his first moto win at Riverdale. And then a few weeks later, he got his first overall win at Salem Marina Cross. The bike has been good to us. We've had lots of good times, good memories. Mason's progressed, but we're getting to the point now where it needs a new clutch. It needs a new top end, uh, the brakes fell off. I can't find plastic anywhere for it. So it's getting to the point where maintaining the bike is going to be more trouble than it's worth. In addition to that, the forks are way too stiff and it makes it hard for Mason to stand up when he lands because the forks are so stiff, they don't budge. Yes, we could get new springs. Yes, we could change the oil and adjust the oil and soften it up for him, but that's gonna be probably more work than it's worth. So at this point, I think it's time for us to move on and get Mason his fifth dirt bike in two years. guys this bike back here it helped out Mason a lot this bike really helped him progress and, and get him to the next level thanks for your help man
Well, there it goes, guys. Just like that, the Polini is gone. It's never fun to say goodbye to a bike, but it kind of needed to happen. We need to move on, we need to progress, we need to get Mason something better, something that he's a little bit more comfortable jumping on. We gave it to that guy, Joe, because he wants to restore it. He wants to keep it as a showpiece. He actually has a Cobra from the same era when his kids raced in his living room. He fixed it up, it looks perfect. He did a really good job on it and he wants to put both these bikes in shows and stuff. So honestly, I probably would have liked to have either kept the bike or gave it away or done something cool with it, but you know, this is good too. Joe helped us out with parts and got us new wheels and suspension and things and helped us out with that. So we sold the bike to him and now it's time to move on to bigger and better things. pretty clean it looks really good for being a uh, 17 this is focus focus too focus now jeez uh, this is a 2017 Husqvarna 50 it's in great shape and we actually found somebody that wanted to trade us the old KX 65 for this 50 I know technically Mason is old enough to move up to a 65 and ride a 65 but you know what I want guys I want him to have one more year one more solid year in the 50 class where he could get a full season he's never raced a full season before I want him to have a full season where he could do the best that he could do and see just how well he could do after this year we'll move him up to a 65 or maybe do 50 and 65 I don't know we'll see how it goes but this bike will hopefully be just as fast as the Polini, but a much better suspension and a lot easier to get parts. So as I'm taking the graphics off, I'm kind of looking over the bike and checking it out a little bit closer. 
and this is pretty sick guys i'm stoked on the bike but i also have a little bit of regret right now because i really should have kept the polini for a little bit longer so we could have done a side-by-side -side comparison because i'm looking at things and this bike just looks way better way easier to ride everything down to the foot pegs the foot pegs on the polini man they were tiny and they didn't grip very well and they kept getting stuck in the up position everything on this bike looks pretty legit the front wheel is bigger so it should handle bumps better the geometry of the bike just looks set up perfectly it basically looks like an actual dirt bike it looks like they just shrunk down an actual dirt bike and man i just i'm excited to see what mason can do on this thing Mason! Yeah? Come here, bro. Oh, look, you show your teeth off. You have your shoes on? Yeah. Okay, come here. I got a question for you. What? Okay. Wait, why are there you, boxes? You can't, look, you can't look in there, but there's a hole. You have to put your hand in if you can feel what's inside. Don't look in there! If you could guess what it is, you get to keep it. No looking. Snickers? <laughs> yeah, good job. You get to keep it. I felt the Snickers. <laughs> nice. Okay, here, try this one. Don't eyes. look. Don't look. Ah. If you. Dash. What do you think it is? Popcorn? I don't know. Nope. nope. Eh. No. Yes, Talkies. You don't. You don't get to keep these. You didn't get it right. It's Lillian's. You didn't get it right. Huh. It felt like popcorn. Okay, got a few more. Okay, don't look. What's in there? <laughs> Glue? <laughs> You're not supposed to look, remember? I guessed it. Put your hand in. I already guessed it. Oh, it's cottage cheese. You don't get it. You don't get to keep yes, it. Yes, I didn't get it. Don't look. Just feel. What is that? Helmet. A helmet? Are you sure? We got to get you out. There you go, buddy. You like it? This is your big boy helmet, Mason. No more Star Wars for you, man. We're going to retire that thing. Okay? Can I break it? Your helmet? Yeah. No, let's save it. Let's keep no, it. No, I'm going to break the old one, not that one. Why no. would I want to break this? No. Okay, Mason. We got one more for you. Okay? Where's the box? Where's the box? Mm -hmm. If you could guess what it is without looking at it, you could feel it, you have to name exactly what it is, then you can keep it. Okay? Are you ready? Go over here. Spin around. Spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around. Okay, that's good. Come over this way. <laughs> Are your eyes closed? <laughs> okay, put your put your hands. <laughs> Put your hand right there. Look at look at me. What, okay. what is it? But you gotta tell me what kind. F feel it and see. If you guess, if you guess what, what it is, you get to keep it. Is it, is it an electric dirt bike? Is it an electric dirt bike? I don't know. No. Feel it. No. Do you feel an exhaust? No. What do you think it is? You think it's a Husky 50? Good job, man. You guessed it right. You get to keep it. Good job, man.
it is. But... Ow! Dude, it fits you perfectly, Mason. Do you like it? Okay, good, because I already sold the Pelini. <laughs>